Hello, let's discuss how to create simulation configuration, predefined uh, config to run simulations with custom type, time and other settings. For complete information, you can visit docsnomagic.com and search for simulation config stereotype. This section includes all the properties, everything uh, related to that with some samples. And I will discuss the most common cases. So we can execute the system model directly. We can run it as you see here and then do some configurations even once you execute. But for any simulation which should be run multiple times, uh, especially by ones who are not creating it, uh, you would want to create simulation configuration. And to do it, you have simulation configuration diagram. It is a good idea to have package for that. And there is dedicated uh, configurators for different purposes like a histogram, a time uh, chart, but also there is a dedicated configurator for, for major configuration here, yeah, simulation configuration, we can name it. Test name. And the main property would be execution target, which you can set uh, what will be executed. So I can drag, you see, block of the system model like this one or some analysis block. And then I will get here the element which will be executed. So now I can see this drop down list which is corresponding to this configurator. I can create another configurator, test B, right? And then drag it also here. You see, now I can execute it with different configurations. What kind of simulation execution targets I can have? Here we see in the uh, properties, in the standard view, the most common properties and the most important execution target. What kind of configuration targets I could have? I could have uh, instance, I can drag instance here. Then I would run the model not, um, and I see those instances here. So for example, this uh, instance, the first one is the mass is five, right? Uh, and um, I can run then uh, with different, uh, you see, inputs. So I would run not the block, but actually instance with different inputs. And um, those instances I can, for example, modify in here, right? Go here change the input, let's say for 25, you see the total is recalculated based on roller pattern and save to existing instance or new instance. You see, I can save to existing instance here. And then next, you see inputs here. Next time I will run this configuration, you see it loads that information here. If I run another configuration, it will load another information here. Uh, what are the properties? Uh, so let's see. Also, you can have uh, as execution target instance table. So this whole instance table could be execution target. In that case, um, if you have multiple instances, I can create one more. For example, initial value would be 15. I would recalculate the whole table. So let's put the table execution target. Yes. And then once I will run this uh, config, it will execute one by one this table configurations. Uh, and will get me results. Actually, I should check that I would not execute the behaviors because this system model has behavior, so I would want to exclude it. Let's go here, auto start false. Uh, that brings us to the second property, auto start, means auto start behaviors inside of the system model. If I want to auto start, I can switch it on, if not off. And now let's go to instance table. Let's remove those values and run it. So you see without behaviors, I got immediately parametric execution available of all instances. Let's set uh, uh, one of the configurations back as an execution target. And here we selected auto start false. So what it means auto start. So actually this auto start, as we can see here in the model, I have some uh, behaviors, let's say state machine here in the system. So if I have auto start off, let's take a look at here to start off and I run my system model, this behavior is not executed. Now, if I will set auto start on and run this model, you see now it's executed. So it is uh, starting the behavior. So it is good in general, but uh, as you saw, you know, if we just run parametric execution on multiple variants, we don't want to run behaviors which uh, require some control and which prevents to stop the execution automatically. Then number of runs. This is for Monte Carlo analysis. If you specify number of runs fives, so then uh, this configuration would be automatically executed five times. And as example, you know, you would need to capture results and that would be 
convenient to capture results in the histogram. I would say like a Monte Carlo analysis would say the execution target again for this Monte Carlo analysis would be, let's say, the whole system and then uh, what property to track for this Monte Carlo analysis output would be the total mass of the system. So what it would do, it would run five times and would capture results into histogram. And then I need to use the histogram as UI here. So I dragging back and running. Uh, so in this case, it will execute five times and will give me results. Again, I should not forget that uh, actually those results should come from the static analysis, not behavior. So to start false and also the uh, histogram might need to be dynamic and uh, keep open after start. This dynamic uh, is the update during running. I could keep it actually static and update just at the end, but open after results. Uh, that's important. Run it. And maybe dynamic. Oh, all, all results are equal because maybe I'm running this instance which does not give me uh, pre random values. Let's run just um, the whole system model. Here we have results. And if I would run more times, like 200, I can see that it's quite quickly updating. It reaches 200, so I got the total mass distribution. The reason why I get distribution because I have this Monte Carlo uh, analysis uh, in the, my system, I have uh, uniform distribution for this input mass to this. So there is randomization which assigns, let's say, simulation run. You see it's randomly assigned from between this and this. Uh, now let's check other properties. So here we have, um, let's remove actually Monte Carlo. Let's update the number to one. Let's remove Monte Carlo analysis from this one here. And let's see what next. So we have also um, results location. So this is important when you want to capture results of your simulation. So you finish your simulation and you want to get results. So let's say that my results location my result location could be instance, could be package. Uh, in case of package, I will just get instance of whatever I execute. So I execute the system model, get the instance. I can also in expert mode, choose the time step, the timestamp would be generated. So let's go back, run it. It finishes execution and I get results here. And you see this timestamp. If I run again, finishes, gets again results with the timestamps. So total mass is here provided. Again, run again, stop. And the total mass is because there is randomization in input, I have output also random. So now uh, what are the properties? So here we have user interface. So I can model user interface using user interface diagram, which would say uh, part uh, subsystem A mass, subsystem B mass, uh, total mass of the system, controlling the behavior of the system. And I can take that config here, go to my user interface diagram and drag it, uh, drag on the header. So I have user interface now associated with config. And we'll talk about user interface modeling and with all the widgets with everything in the separate uh, uh, session. Now let's see how this works. We have here subsystem B mass and total mass and because our subsystem A consists of A and two, A1 and two variants, you need to pick one unless we will pick one as a part of the instance. But we can do it manually here at uh, one variant. You see now variant is assigned and we have this executed here. If I will go to behavior because behavior was not executed automatically, I can run it from here and then I also can control it. So this UI is actually allowed to control simulation and also monitor results. Now what else? So we have execution listener, which includes most of those uh, CSV export, uh, then uh, 
sequence diagram execution sequence diagram recording as execution i can drag and drop it and you see it uh, add this to execution listener then csv export uh, data again i can say export the data of the whole system during execution and the uh, file name will be data csv and i write at the end that would save just results or so write at uh, each step so this simulation changes the steps like for example time it writes this and then what values do i want to get out so maybe total mass maybe initial mass and maybe initial mass of the part b and part uh, subsystem a and b and let's say right at the end uh, and i can also say like for example run the monte carlo analysis so if i will do here like say 100 times use this execution i will actually remove the sequence diagram execution for now and just run monte carlo So it's here executing and writing to this file. So this file will contain all the data. So now let's go to the file and see, okay, it was generated. I can open it. And I should see 100 values, which were initial values and final values of execution. So again, it, it was just one randomized value. So that was the result I got. Okay, so now, uh, if the sequence diagram execution, so I will not do this 100 times, I'll just do once. And sequence diagram execution, again, as execution listener, run it, um, start behavior. And you see now it shows all the objects executed, what was the state of those objects. I can control, you see it shows what are the signals and calls operations, uh, time change, uh, property change, uh, and uh, so on. can uh, remove that um, now what else do we have open simulation pane so this one will just uh, open the simulation pane if it will say false it will not show it uh, i have also some um, animation things uh, silent would run simulation without animation so what would how it would look like so let's open this config um, in the auto start run if I go to the behavior, you see even behavior is running. I can actually control behavior. I see that it's actually this uh, whole system is on in idle. See it's on and is in idle, but still uh, I don't see animation. So that animation is uh, not executed. We don't need animation if we don't want to monitor the execution. We just want, for example, analysis results. Animation speed, that would be like uh, when you run simulation, you have this clock, which by default is real time. We'll talk about clock in a moment. Uh, but um, uh, when you run uh, in the real time, you can slow down animation. Actually, animation speed can be slowed down in any clock. Just visually slow down animation. Show active uh, state on the appearance uh, on the parts. So you can show actually in the part property diagram and use it as a dashboard the image of the state actual active state uh, you can show uh, properties uh, flow properties uh, what flows through the connector and uh, also we can choose which diagram would be active when we run the simulation so let's choose the diagram we'll go system model uh, system choose this diagram okay and then when we run simulation now we see that okay we have some icon based on the state so actually the state of the let's see the subsystem uh, a has the state you see the state has an icon assigned as an image here in specification we have uh, expert mode we have uh, image to assign the icon and uh, now based on that icon i can also switch uh, between states and you see it switches on and different icon is shown so that's one way to represent the uh, what state system is in internal block diagram which gives us control of the simulation at the same time 
I can uh, just see co uh, concentrated information. I can show as a image those uh, parts. In that case, you see the just icons are visible, you know, so it depends what system is in, you know, engine running or stopped and so on. Okay, so those are the main properties. There are some properties, as you saw, in expert mode. I will not talk about them. Please give the comment, you know, if you need more information on that. Uh, also, we will shortly talk about web service properties. Those properties are actually to run the user interface in the web. For that, you need to install no cost plugin for the web publishing. Uh, web service for Cameo Simulation Toolkit, this one. It's no cost, just to download and let me know in comments if you need the link to download. When you run uh, the simulation, you see it gives you the link to web page and server started. Uh, web server started, we can open that in uh, embedded browser or in separate browser. And track and monitor user inter uh, in the user interface. You see, like I can dock it here, I can dock it here and see what's happening with the simulation. Let's see this one, right? I can say power on, control through the web, you know, in the browser, even remotely, right? Okay. Now this is the web server properties uh, uh, and those are the time properties. So uh, we have separate uh, video on the clocks, different clocks we support just shortly. Uh, by default, um, I will explain shortly what's happening here. By default, if none of those properties are set, so we use this real-time simulation clock, what it means, you run it and it shows simulation based on the computer clock, right? Simulation time based on computer clock. So any property changes are captured at that moment when they change actually based on computer clock, right? Uh, now, if you want to switch to the model based clock, which would be internal one, right? So we can set up here start time zero, step size one or something else and uh, unit seconds or something else. In that case, every duration constraint, like for example here, we have in state machine idle after idle 10 seconds would be treated as a one second. I could even remove those units here. In any case, second is one, the granularity of time increases one second, and I can delay by one second, that would give me real time. I could uh, delay by zero five, that would give me twice fast than real time could delay by two that will give try slower by real time as you can see it is very important sometimes to have hours years and so in simulation and be able to actually identify the granularity of the time and the delay of simulation uh, uh, in order to be able to uh, simulate virtual time it is very precise when we use this kind of simulation here seconds uh, and step unit, um, step size of the increase because no other duration um, uh, delays are influencing model transitioning from step to step except duration constraints in the model. So you'll see, for example, with the zero, with the no delay, it will immediately switch to those 10 seconds. So that's the only event which happens and which triggers that sim transition. Let's go to this diagram and let's see what happens. I just power on and it immediately transitions to this one and this is back. You see, immediately, right? Now, if I will put some delay, because that's the only event, so the time just jumps to the end of that. Uh, now, if I will put some delay here, let's say zero 0.5, so it will wait five seconds because it's 10, uh, 10 seconds and twice faster and will execute uh, the same simulation. Okay, power on and wait to see like uh, executes twice faster, 10 seconds and then switches. Now, um, whatever time configuration properties, which are the major ones, um, you can actually access the time variable, the uh, current time uh, with this name, but you can also point here uh, to the specific value property, which would be used as a time variable. So if you will point here, then it's not the automatic increase of the clock will trigger any events in simulation, but actually you will need to increase that property manually so you would change the step dynamically. So you can point to value property of your clock in the model. You can model the clock and point to value property, but then you are responsible to increase it. 
And uh, there are a few other properties which are uh, not so often used, but there is number of steps to end the simulation, and time to end the simulation, and few others. So thank, thank you. We'll have a uh, uh, next session on the user interface uh, modeling uh, and uh, execution. And also please check links below on the different clocks and uh, simulation config uh, in the documentation. Thank you so much.